In this video, we are going to cover how to deploy and access open source model using Azure OpenAI. This is your Azure portal, but to access any kind of AI model, we have to go to Azure AI Foundry and we can access Azure AI Foundry using this particular URL oai.azure.com. This particular platform was earlier known as Azure AI Studio. Now it has been renamed to Azure AI Foundry. So first thing actually what we have to do is create a resource. So we are going to select it and here you could see like it's asked for creating new Azure OpenAI service resource. We don't have any as of now. So we are just going to click on this. And as soon as we are going to click on this, it's going to route us to Azure portal. Now under this Azure portal, what it is asking, like we have to create an Azure OpenAI resource first. If you directly want to create it from portal itself, then you have to search for Azure AI services. And under Azure AI services, you can see this Azure OpenAI. So from here also, you can create your Azure OpenAI service or you can directly create it from Azure AI Foundry. So first of all, we have to create our resource group. As of now, I don't have any existing resource group. So I'm just going to create a new one and I can just name it RG Demo 3006. So this is going to be a first step. After that, we have to give some name to our Azure OpenAI service. So probably I can just say Azure OpenAI Demo Service and give this 3006. Pricing tier, I'm going to select it as a standard one. So you need to have a paid Azure subscription before utilizing the service. I do have one. So I'm just going to go ahead and now click on next. Click on next again. I'm just going to go ahead with the default setup and now i can click on create initialize our deployment now it's submitting our deployment so we have to wait for a few minutes before this particular service can be created and now the deployment has been completed and you have to notice this we are creating all these services on portal.azure.com and not on azure ai foundry so if you want to check whether this particular service or resource has been created or not then you can also go to azure ai service and here you can click on azure open ai and you can see the service Service which we have created just now now if i go to azure ai foundry and just refresh it then i should be able to see the service over here we have got our service we have got our key so our service has been created my subscription is here pay as you go now i can click on this particular resource name and it's going to route us to azure ai foundry under this we have azure open ai service and then under this like we can have our resource name listed over here because in this video we are especially going to talk about the open source model how to access it our first step is done where we have created our azure open ai service now actually we have to click on this model catalog just to see like what kind of models we have over here you you can see there is 22 models and these are basically related to OpenAI but we are looking for the open source model. We are going to click on this one where it's saying explore more models. So I'm just going to click on this and here you could see it's a full model catalog where you could find open source model as well as open AI models. So here we could see the deep seek model as well. We do have a Mistral and if you go down a bit there are some more models. Some models are from Hugging Face. Then you can find the the llama models also on this if you know the name you can just directly search over here and you can see the models in total as of now there are total 1827 models available on azure ai foundry so you can use any of the model so we will try to deploy one of the open source model and try to access it via code because deep seek model is in highlight so we will try to deploy this particular model first so let me just select this and here you could see all the details about this particular model so this is basically a reasoning model this is a deep seek r1 and how much parameter it has how much context length it has how this model has been trained using chain of thought and the reinforcement learning and then there are some recommendations like how we have to work with this particular model it's saying like avoid adding a system prompt and all instruction should be contained within a user prompt so there are some instructions over here after that you can see the supported data type support language there is azure ai content safety also applied on top of it and then at the bottom you can see the benchmark against all the models so here you do have the dseq r1 and there are the different benchmarking and this has been compared against cloud gpt4 or deepseq v3 which is a chat model and then this deepseq r1 is our reasoning model you can get all those details from here now actually we can just go ahead and deploy this so i have to click on this deploy button and now it's saying like we don't 
don't have any project created so before actually we can deploy this model we have to create a project i don't have any project as of now so i have to create a new one so i'm just going to click on this and it's going to give a project name like this it's a default name i can go ahead and change this name it is going to create a hub and then under this you can see it's also creating a new resource group there are certain data st storage is also going to get created so storage key vault ai service all these new services are going to be created so if i do not want to go ahead with the default one so i can just click on this customize and then i will see some options so hub name i can go ahead with this with the default one the resource group i already have it so i am just going to point it to the resource group which i have created and then there is a connect azure AI services on azure open ai service trying to create a new one but i have already created one azure open ai service via portal so i can just point it to that and i do not want azure AI search to be connected with this particular one it's a default option which i'm getting and i would just go ahead with this default option so let me just go ahead and click on next and now it will try to create hub project we probably have to wait few more minutes because now it's validating the resources and it will try to create all these resources it will try to create ai project hub storage account and key vault so it has started with key vault so key vault is going to store connection string managed by azure ai then there is a storage account for data upload storing artifacts created by azure ai ai hub is a collaboration environment for the team to share project work model endpoints compute connection and security settings and then you are going to have your project if you want to learn more about the hub and dependencies then there is a link around it so i will put this link in the description so that you can go over it now you can see all these resources has been created and it is now routing us to serverless api deployment for deepseek r1 let's go to pricing and terms so here you could see the deepseek r1 use is currently priced as dollar zero use is subject to rate limits which may change at any time so there won't be any cost of using this particular model but you would still be paying minimal charges as per your usage for the other azure services which are getting deployed as part of this particular model deployment like our storage key vault and other services so here you could see you can give your deployment name it's giving you the project resource and then the content filter is also enabled so i would just go ahead with the default option and click on this deploy button now you can see it is getting created and this is being reflected under this model plus endpoint section so anytime if you want to use it then our project has been created over here the name which was given you can see all hub and projects here you could get the details our project is over here and under this project under model and endpoint this particular model is getting deployed on top of that you can also see the azure ai content safe safety is also enabled now we will wait for this model to be provisioned and after that we'll try to access it via code so you can see the provisioning state is coming as succeeded and after that we are going to have a target uri we are going to get a key and then there are certain api routes so either we can use it as your ai model inference chat completion or we can use the deep seek r1 chat completion so we can access this model by passing any of the api over here our target uri is going to be this you can see the swagger ui is going to be this now we would like to see how to access this particular model via code from our local so for that we will go to this consume section over here and under this consume section you can see the rest endpoint the api which we have seen over here in the api routes you could see the same endpoint listed in the consume section if you want to access it via endpoint and if you want to access it via code then there are three options python c sharp and json we are more interested to work with python so here is the simple code so what i can do like i can just copy paste this code so here first thing what i can do is i can create a folder i can just name it epc and i can just select it under this i can create a new file i can just name it demo.py and i can just paste this code as it is now if you notice to access this code we have to install this azure ai inference package this particular package is different from azure open ai package and you could see like some differences how you are accessing model and invoking your client if you would like to know more about this package then i would put some links in the description but in short this particular api gives you a common code to access all these 1800 models which we have seen on azure ai portal 
using the same API, you can just call OpenAI model or any of the open source model. Whereas using Azure OpenAI packages specifically, you can only call the OpenAI models. Microsoft has created this particular inference point so that you don't have to switch to different API based on the different models and you can access all those models using the same API. So in short, this is what it is. Let's go to our code now. And first thing what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my terminal and I'm going to invoke a virtual environment so that there shouldn't be any conflict with the existing packages on my local. So I'm just going to create a new environment and I'm just going to say yes. Now, once this is done, I just have to invoke this environment. So I'm just going to say scripts, then activate. And now I have to install certain packages. So as mentioned, first of all, I'm going to install this Azure AI inference package. And we'll wait for this package to be installed first. Now you can see this package has been installed successfully and the errors what we were getting now it has been gone. Other thing what you have to notice it is trying to get a key by accessing this particular variable in my environment file. So we have to create a new environment file and I have to pass this specific key what it's looking for. So I'm just going to take it put it in the environment file and then I have to pass a key. To pass a key I again have to go back to Azure AI Foundry and then we can go back to details and here in details you can see the key what I have over here. So I'm just going to take a key from here and then we'll go to my Visual Studio to paste this key and we'll save this file now. Again I will go back to demo.py and we have to get this key from the environment file for that I'm going to use another package that is going to be .env import load .env and then it, this particular method is going to help us to load the environment variables and this is also not installed in this virtual environment so I'm just going to install it by running this command pip install python dash .env and we'll wait for this package to be installed so this package has been installed as well now we are good to go ahead and run this code what exactly are we doing in this code we are trying to get our API key from the environment variable which which we have just declared and after that you can see the difference how we are invoking our model we are using azure openai then we were invoking our client by passing azure openai but here because we are using this azure ai inference so we have to use this chat completion client and after that we just have to pass our endpoint so because in this case we are using a deep seek so we have to pass this particular endpoint or we can just go ahead and deploy some other models and then the endpoint is going to get changed accordingly and after that we are just passing our api key just to create a credentials these two parameters is going to help you to create your client then we can use this client to get model information so what is the model name what is the type and what is the provider name of the model these details we are printing it out and from the message perspective first of all we are passing a user message because this is a thinking model and as we have seen in the documentation we do not have to pass any system prompt or any specific instruction we just have to pass like what exactly we want and then these using model are having the capability just to think about the process and come up with the proper response so here what we are asking i'm going to paris what should i see it has already listed out the role of assistant content is going to be paris the capital of france is known for its stunning architecture art museums and historicals again there is a follow-up question from the user like what is so great about it and then we are leaving up to this deep seek model to come up with the answer based on the context what has been provided so far just to get a response out of it we are just calling this complete and passing the payload which we have created over here and uh, in the response you can see we can get a response using the same method which we have been using under openai and azure openai model then we are printing the model and then uh, specifically it is printing the usage like how many prompt tokens have been used total tokens has been used and the completion token has been used so with this we can just go ahead and run this code and see the response what we get first of all it has just printed it out the model name it's a deep sea car one model type is chart completion model provider name is deep seek so this part of code has been executed now we are waiting for this reasoning model to process the context which we have provided and after that just generating a response for us so it took few minutes to generate a response but finally we got it so let's go with the response so it's trying to print this particular line and it started with the thinking process first so we are also getting to know like 
like what model is thinking based on the context what we had given here you could see first of all is trying to process like what exactly the user asked and you could see the thinking process here it, it is thinking about the Eiffel Tower and then structure engineering is impressive too so and at the last you can also think if the user might want more than just facts so they might be wondering why it's worth visiting compared to other sites so it has come up with all these thoughts first and everything has been encapsulated between this think tag so it is starting from here and then ending over here and after that it has just printed out the response for a user based on its thought and the context and then you could see the answer like it's saying okay Eiffel Tower is iconic for so many reasons and then it has given this historical significance engineering marvel and some other attributes as well and at the last you could see we are also printing the model so again the model name is going to be deepseek r1 and then we are printing the usage the prompt tokens it has used the total token and the completion token so if you just add this completion and prompt token you would come up with this total tokens so this is how actually you can host any open source model on Azure OpenAI and then use it in your code by using this Azure AI inference API. You do not have to modify anything as such. From the code perspective, you just have to modify the endpoint and the key which you'd be getting after hosting a model on Azure OpenAI. So this is what we have in this video. Thank you for watching.